the Fussdike and Witham navigation. We've just come through Torxey Lock behind us. Uh, there's a boat in front of us who came through the lock, who's um, pooping along as if he was on the Stratford and Avon Canal and, and not a tidal river. But uh, we're going as slow as we possibly can in tick over speed. But anyway, what's your thoughts on the River Witham and uh, Fussdike, Fran? Yeah, looking back at it, I've really, I have enjoyed it. It's, we've been a month yesterday, hasn't it, that we've been there. Um, beautiful scenery, the wildlife has been wonderful. Um, our only problem with it is that there's not been enough mooring spots and also that it's not easy to get off. You can't just moor up anywhere as we like to and it's not been easy to get off and walk about unless you just want to look, walk along the bank and the towpath. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad, really glad we've done it, but we are ready to get back on canal now. We are indeed. There's not enough pontoon moorings down there and consequently um, people are just plonking themselves on the moorings and staying there for longer than uh, they're allowed to, uh, which means that when you're cruising like we are there and back, you struggle to find places to moor and we had to moor end on the pontoon one day, didn't we? Yeah. And drop the anchor at the front. Uh, because there was just no room. Most moorings are only two days, aren't they, as well? Which means that, you you know, if you've travelled one day and arrived there, you only get one day really to have a look around the place yeah. before you've got to move on again. And uh, you know us, we like to take our time over things. But having said that, it's been a month that we've been down there. We didn't want to be any longer. No. They, it's because it's, it's the Fenland part of Lincolnshire is uh, reclaimed land. It's been drained from marshes. So therefore, there's no history of uh, old footpaths networking across that land. So if we wanted to go out for a walk, we had to stick to the roads in the main, uh, with the odd exception. But yeah, we enjoyed it. It's nice flat land, big skies, lovely sunrises, lovely sunsets. And uh, it was different, but looking forward to canals, as you said. Yeah. And uh, we're off to the Chesterfield now. And we've had enough of towns as well, to be yeah, honest, haven't we? Have. we? Yeah. But we have got to stop at Gainsborough, haven't we, on the way through? Yeah, we've got 10 miles to do to get to Gainsborough. We're going to stay there for a few hours, and then when the next tide comes in, we'll head up to West Stockwith onto the Chesterfield Canal. And hopefully there's lots of places on the Chesterfield Canal where you can just stop and moor where you like. We will see. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> So we've uh, cranked it a little bit, overtaken our friend, because at the speed he was going it would take us five hours to do ten miles. <laughs> we don't particularly want to be out in this hot weather for five hours. Four hours, 45 minutes is maximum for me. And also the tide is going out now, isn't yeah. it? So it's going to be getting shallower as time yeah. goes on. So. so we're just cruising a bit. We'll get to Gainsborough and uh, have a quick walk around Gainsborough. and. Um, move on later on. We're going to speak to phone the lock keeper at uh, East Stockwith, West Stockwith, while West we're at Gainsborough. Yeah. And just apparently it could be a bit of a tricky turn into the um, Chesterfield. So we're just going to get some advice and find out the absolute best time to be going. So we'll just do as we're told, won't we? I always do. I always do. Right, well, look out for the post then. I'm trying to find the post. There's a post. <laughs> yeah. A nice old windmill there. That 
was a bit of a crash bang wallop landing. Interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> there's, um, there's a river cruiser boat in front of us, moored slightly up the pontoon. We didn't have much room to get in. Technically, I suppose I should have turned on the river and pointed the bow against the flow and moored up that way, but it is flowing so fast, I just did not fancy turning the boat and getting took downstream for God knows how long. So I took the chicken's way out and just bashed and crashed it in. Fortunately, the chap on the boat in front came out and helped us. But and, uh, we've, yeah, we've just, just hair raising. gone around a couple of sharp bends and even going around the bends, the boat is going right over sideways as you're going around a bend. So to turn 180 degrees and not that wide a space really, no, is not. it? I think would be really difficult. So it's hard to know what is the right thing to do. We were told this morning to come out, come arrive at the lock for about 8.30. We were there at eight o'clock. We didn't uh, eventually get through till quarter past nine, gone quarter past nine. So uh, we're a bit later than we expected. So the flow's pretty fast now, really fast. And the guy that we overtook hasn't landed yet. So we're staying on the pontoon, waiting for him to turn up uh, to give him a hand. He might not need a hand. He's probably more professional than we are, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he's- If uh, not, we'll just watch. He's gonna be an hour, I think, behind us. Gainsborough. We spent six or seven hours there waiting for the tide to turn. It's really boring, really hot. We had a concrete wall throwing heat back at us. Really, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're now going against the flow, against the tide. We've got, what was it, four miles to do. And we're at pretty high rev, so excuse the noise. But uh, it doesn't seem to be getting very much, very far, very quickly. <laughs> so we're about halfway on our little journey this evening. It's now quarter to seven something like that and uh, as I said the water's coming this way and we've got to turn against it and go into the lock at uh, West Stockwith. It's quite a sharp angle coming this way into it. Um, we'll just see how we go. The lock keeper is expecting us so we'll see. Got our friend that was uh, following us this morning is behind us again. Hopefully, we Hopefully keep losing him. Hopefully, we keep him. losing him. But yeah, he's uh, just pooping along, but we'll wait for him in the lock. So yeah, it's exciting. I will be glad when today is over, I've got to say. It's been a long day, hasn't <laughs> it's it? It's been a long day, and it's just, we just want to get this done, really. Um, yeah, get on to non-river. Yeah, yeah. So, speak to you in about three quarters of an hour, hopefully. It's a little bit hair raising this. It's a bit stressful, it's not it's more stressful than crossing the Mersey. Because I don't know if it's because we had a guide then, but this is really stressful. And really hard to steer. The water's coming in thick and fast. And at any moment it's gonna start going the other way. That's what we don't want. We wanna be in that lock before it starts going the other way. Because it goes the other way really quickly. <laughs> so we've got about uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to do, just about half a mile. We're really cranking it at nearly twice the revs we would normally move and we're just going three, four kilometres an hour. <laughs> so uh, that's, um, you know, less than about two miles an hour. So yeah, it's, it's very stressful and we just wish we'd just in the lock now, get it over and done with. We've lost our man behind us, he was on our tail where he just uh, slowed down and we don't know what's happened to him. We can't turn around and go and see if he's okay. We've notified the uh, lock keeper, should he you know, call him and let him know if he's not coming or he's turned around or he'll be there at a later time. But 
I don't know. We can't turn around, it's just too dodgy, too fast flowing. So. So here we are approaching West Stockwith Lock and the good old lock keeper is giving us some guidance to get in but the flow of water against us is just keeping the back end from coming in and yes here we go crunch <laughs> West Stockwith we managed to get through the lock without too many problems a bit of a bump and a grind but <laughs> given the current flow against us I didn't think it was too bad. The lock keeper actually gave you a 9 out of 10 he did, yeah. so that can't be that bad can it but no. it was a bit scary when you're going against the current or with the current we went didn't we against the current I don't know current, I've lost yeah. track it was a bit scary but so we've been here for five nights. We stayed one night in the marina just back there at, at, uh, by the lock. And uh, fortunately, a viewer of ours who's got a linear mooring just along here suggested we might be able to move here for a short period because the owner of this patch here is out and about at the moment. And so uh, a few phone calls later and that where they said, yeah, no problem. So we, we've been here now for five nights. It's been fantastic. It just has been a real recharge of batteries oh, it has. stop, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, after the um, rushing and everything of getting off the rivers, etc. But it's been so hot this last week and having this, these trees here for shade has just been amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've been able to get the weaving loom out here, which I've always wanted to do. But of course, when you're on towpath, unless it's a very, very big towpath, there's not that much room. Because we're the end of the moorings or the linear moorings here, nobody comes up this far. So I've had the weaving loom out, I've been spinning. Um, you've been editing like crazy, haven't you? Because it's been peaceful yeah, and know, you've been hiding from the heat. So yeah. it's been good, really lovely. So we've given the boat a bit of a Bruce spring clean <laughs> and uh, done the roof night before last. And this, today we reversed back up to fill the tank with water. Whilst we were there, I washed the side of the boat with canal water, not tap water, because uh, a lot of the country are in measures now because of the drought. And uh, you've been active in other ways, haven't you, friend? It was hot <laughs> and the water was cold. <laughs> For the first time in four and a half years, I had my first proper dunking. And um, I did it in quite a spectacular way, I've got to say. <laughs> I don't say know quite again. what happened, but I was just getting back onto the boat and I must have caught my foot on something or tripped on something, but I went over, head over heels, head first into the canal. Um, fortunately, I don't know what happened. I mean, I was inside editing and fortunately I didn't have my headphones on which I normally do, but it was too hot and I thought, oh, I can't be bothered. And uh, I heard you go in <laughs> and went running at the back after a few expletives and to see you standing there in the water. Yeah, I'd got water up my nose, in my mouth, but I managed to stand up, turn around, stand up, spat it all out. Um, I knew that I'd hurt my shoulder and my knee, but by hook or by crook, you managed to get me out. I was able to stand on the, the plate that's at the back of the boat with one leg and you pulled me up got me out, um, got into a dry dress just while I sat and recovered. Um, and then proceeded to faint. Yeah, I came, my heart rate dropped really quite low. Dropped to 40, so we uh, called the ambulance, didn't we? <laughs> and then after about 20 minutes and a biscuit and a cup of tea later, you felt a lot better. Yeah. So we cancelled the ambulance, yeah. and, uh, but they, had, they turned up anyway, and they, did, they weren't told that they were cancelled. 
But uh, they checked you all over and uh, you're okay, aren't you? I'm fine, yeah. That actually, the call out was, was quite funny because they're a lovely team. It was Claire and Sam and... Adam. Adam. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they were great, but they'd actually been told it was a drowning. <laughs> so, um, interesting. But anyway, yeah, what's good is they've checked me out thoroughly. By then, my heart rate had gone back up again, and everything is perfectly spot on. Yeah. Like, I'm so fit for an old bird that I'm doing quite well. I'm just a bit black and blue. This knee's like really big, and that shoulder's pulled out. So poor old Rich is doing everything for me, but I'm getting better by the day and two more days I'm going to be walking again, I know. So, uh, our, our long distance walking activities have been off the cards at the moment yeah. for a while. Thankfully I've got my bike so I can get out and do some cycling if I want to. But there's some walks around here on the River Idle. I've always called it River Idle, but apparently it's the River Idle. Is it? I think. Uh, Idle. Yeah. Um, but we can't do that because I can't walk it, so that'll have to wait until we come back yeah, um, will. and we can investigate yeah. that then. So. It's fine. The interesting thing is um, Adam, the paramed paramedic, said that his dad watches YouTube channels, narrowboat YouTube channels, and he mentioned minimalist. Yes, yeah. So He'd... he quickly got one of our cards thrust in his hand. <laughs> Never <laughs> miss an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, today's our last day here. I'm just putting everything back on the roof after cleaning it and uh, having a cup of coffee and then we're off. Yep, we've got um, just around the corner, there's a two hour stop that we can pull into, which is apparently just metres from a supermarket, a um, little mini supermarket. So mm. we're going to stock up and about three miles in, we've been told that there's the moorings that are completely isolated. There's not a shop, a village, there's nothing nearby. So we're going to go um, stock top with supplies and maybe stay for another couple of days chilling out. And by then, I know I will be walking, so... Um, that's the plan, Rich. Yeah. Um, I can't do all this stuff, so. No. Is it drinking my coffee? <laughs> the flowers are looking fabulous still, aren't they? They've uh, really done us proud. I've and just re sown some more lettuces because I could do a little bit of gardening while I was sitting here. So we had all the plants off. I've, I've picked up some dead stuff, re, re sown lettuces and radishes, hoping to get another crop in before winter sets in. And the um, tomatoes are fabulous, aren't they? Yeah, we had a whole meal of tomatoes yesterday. Tomato pasta with fresh tomatoes. It's been lovely. Look, all these leaves are falling on my nice clean roof. <laughs> right, come on, let's go. So I was watching a video this morning by Minimalist uh, when they came through here just over two years ago. And the towpath then had just been redone. As you can see from this screenshot. But look how quickly nature takes over. The trouble is, it's armco all the way you know, where you can moor up to, but there's no way you can get in here. So it's a shame that certain sections of it aren't cleared for narrowboaters, but uh, can't complain because we're always saying how much we love nature. But anyway, here we go, a couple of locks, a few miles, mooring up again. This used to be the site of the Packet Inn pub but uh, no longer, a mini housing development now. Late hatching of chicks. You need your BW key here to get through. There's a lock on the paddles, but uh, you need two hands to do it. It's quite stiff. Clearly out of practice because I didn't need to operate the lock because it was empty anyway. What an idiot. Right, just head back to the boat now. Untie her for Fran, so she's not jumping on and off the boat with a rotten leg. So uh, I'm getting some exercise anyway. It's absolutely wonderful to be back on canals again. Doing the locks yourself. Narrow canals, small locks, and this isn't this isn't a big lock for canals, but the river locks are like five times this size at least. So yeah, loving it, loving it. And what a shame for Fran, she can't get jump on and off the boat to help, or she can't walk to the shop, she can't go for a walk. It's everything she lives for is walking. And. Uh, 
she behaves herself and just takes it easy and rests up for a few days or more uh, she'll be kind it should be okay but I know what it's like when I did my ankle in a couple of years or so ago it was uh, so tempting to think oh it's a lot better now and then you off you go for a walk and you come back and it swells up again so I think it's a sign of getting old you don't mend as quick as you used to How are you managing? You alright? Yeah, it's good. Your leg okay? Yeah, my leg's okay. Are you going to hover or do you want me to I'm going to hover. You're going to hover, right. I'll see you up there. As luck would have it, it looks like this lock is empty as well. It just looks like it's all reed up there, no water from here. Yeah, I think there's a canal there. <laughs> What's going on with them? Well, I think they've done their usual, decided that that one's going to be cast out. weed in this canal. Try and get a bit of it out as I'll never get the gate open. Well, that'll do for now I think. So we've moored up there just for half an hour or so. Well, we go to the co-op, which is just there. You love a shop, don't you, friend? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot I'm jumping ahead and you just can't walk fast, step. can you? I did say to her, stay on the boat, I'd sort it. Well, she knew I'd come back without the essentials. No, yeah, you'll come back with a bag of sweets and biscuits. <laughs> anyway, do you remember that advert? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that advert in the 70s? It's all at your co-op now. No, no. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was specific, I, I specific still, to Birmingham, perhaps. I still remember Sainsbury's with the um, mosaic floors and the baking counter. <laughs> Blimey. Posh in London, wasn't it? How's the plastic free living Not going? very good. Look at the trolley. There's I nothing. I, I, I want to buy a pepper. I've had to buy three in a plastic bag because apparently you don't want to one pepper. How was the co op shopping experience for you, Fran? Oops. Well, Sorry. I've got to say, we've got to get back on it. We've got to get back on trying to shop with less plastic. There, was a, there is a greengrocer stall near to where we're moored, but because I couldn't walk, I couldn't go up there. And, um, oh, I could have done, you could have told I me. I know, I'd forgotten about it. The trouble is with life on the canals, you are, you've got a shop where you can shop and it's not always the best place. There's not always fresh fruit available. There's not always a butcher's if you eat meat. There's not, you know, it's, you've got to go where you've got to go. And yeah. unfortunately, places like that, they're, we, not, they're not, there's no sign that they're giving up on plastic, is there? We need plastic to eat packaging. fresh, we like eating fresh vegetables. You know, that's the main part of our diet is fresh vegetables, but, all of it was in plastic, yeah. except for oranges and lemons. And the odd apples. <laughs> and so, uh, so we got rid of 50 odd quid. 50 pounds. Two bags uh, of shopping. And it's all, you know, these are the, you know, I wanted a pepper. Mm. But you can't, it's, I don't know if it's because people can't have a red one without having a yellow one and an orange one to go with it. Traffic lights. I don't know, I don't know what it is. But, Anyway, hopefully that is going to keep us going for a few days by hook or by crook and um, I'd better have a look out for another country market or a greengrocer I think. I know what it is, it's mm. crap is what it is. 
Anyway, let's go. So fresh veg or no fresh veg, plastic or no plastic, Fran, still wouldn't give this up, eh? No, we just do our best, don't we? And um, we've just got to work a little bit harder. But this is what we want. So we're just going at tick over speed, just soaking it all in. It's a warm, muggy day, narrow canal, and it's just bliss. Absolute bliss. Mm -hmm. 